Hey everybody. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about emissions and catalytic converters, particularly three-way catalytic converters. I have a subscriber who's been having trouble passing his emissions tests out in California. And uh, it occurred to me that perhaps it would be a good thing to go through, I've been going through diagnostics, but uh, maybe some basics on the catalytic converters. Because he gave me um, some thoughts or information uh, about how his, um, you know, the test failures he was having. So I thought I'd walk through how does a three-way catalytic converter work? This is a GM-focused um, diagnostic. So, you know, it would apply to my Tuneport Camaro. It would also apply almost to any of the 80s and early 90s OBD1 three-way catalytic converter cars that GM built. If you've got a carburetor or a throttle body, you probably have to look at the service manual because they're all a little bit different. In, you know, they're a little bit different in how the val their valves are uh, mechanized and where the pump is and so forth. But I'm going to walk through a little bit of explanation of how this is supposed to work. Uh, I've got the service manual here for the tuned port, and I'll walk through my 1985 uh, 305 a little bit, and we'll take a look at it. But the answers are applicable to, you know, many other cars, so let's, let's get a start on it here. First, I'm going to show you is the basic layout of a three-way catalytic converter. You know, you've got an engine, um, an air pump, Almost all of these early engines had an air pump because, because they wanted to put air um, in between the catalysts. And, I go, and as I go into this discussion for emissions, I'm going to go in with the premise that the engine is operating normally. In other words, fuel system, ignition system, it's, it's running well, but you're not passing emissions because of something in the catalyst and or um, or in, in the catalyst and or air pump system. So first off, uh, you have an air pump and the purpose of that air pump is to send air down to the either the exhaust manifold or down to the catalytic converter. And you can see from my little cartoon you've got a pump and it actually has three different outlets to the pump. One goes to the exhaust manifold one goes to the catalytic converter, and the third one goes uh, out to atmosphere. It's called a divert, and it sends air overboard, so to speak. And in these early cars, um, I want to say, um, today many of the cars don't have air going down to the catalytic converter anymore. I think catalytic converter development has you know, reached a point, the science has advanced, and they don't need that. But in these early cars, you had two things that you needed to do. One was, they call it a three-way catalytic converter, but if you read the service manual, and you read literature online and so forth, and you look at how these systems work, this is a dual bed converter. Your front bed is your three-way catalyst. They call it a reducing catalyst, and its intent is to reduce nitrogen oxides, or NOx. And they call it NOx because it may be NO, it may be NO2, it may be NO3. It's a, it's a variety of nitrogen oxides. So NOx is just the shorthand. But what you need to be able to do in the front catalyst is you strip the oxygen off of the nitrogen and separate the two. Then what you want to come out with is carbon dioxide, so you actually need some CO, some carbon monoxide, which is already coming down the pipe. And it, it combines with that free oxygen to go and make CO2. So you get some reduction of carbon monoxide and hydrocarbon along with the nitrogen oxides, and so it's a three-way converter. Then in the second half, it's actually a two-way converter downstream of the air pipe, and it goes and reduces hydrocarbon and carbon monoxide even further. 
If you look at my little cartoon here of, how a, of what that emissions system looks like, in order to, for this converter, the three-way part, to work correctly, you need to be very close to 14.7 to 1, what they call stoichiometric. It's a fancy word, but it means that, that you have just enough oxygen to convert all the fuel into CO2 and water. And at stoichiometric, you have no excess air and you have no excess fuel. It's not rich, it's not lean, it's right smack on the middle. And the way the converter works, you can see the band there, the effective range. Um, it's, you know, maybe a couple tenths of a point. Where in that window, your, um, the conversion efficiency on the, on the axis there, on the vertical axis, the y-axis, uh, the conversion efficiency is optimum for all three, right about in that 14.7 range for all three pollutants. So you want to stay close in there. And even the reality a little more is that uh, the way these catalysts work is you actually don't, your closed loop system doesn't actually hold right smack on 14.7. It actually goes back and forth really fast. And you can see some of that if you get a scan tool and you look at what they call the cross counts. It's, it's crossing back and forth, rich lean, rich lean, rich lean. And that actually helps um, the, the conversion. That's kind of deep technical, but, but they actually like to see uh, oscillation, I'll call it, back and forth across. And in some cases, if you're having emissions trouble, it could be your oxygen sensor because in some cases they'll get lazy and they won't be fast enough to pick up that oscillation and they'll run to one side or the other and kind of and not be centered up and you'll have some problems with conversion efficiency but what you'll see is that you know the, the NOx is low on the rich side and it comes up as you get leaner the, um, until you get to stoichiometric and then you'll see that the hydrocarbons and the carbon monoxide are high on the other side and so the goal is to kind of get them in the middle and not run rich or lean. So when you first start the car, this is how the system is supposed to operate. When you first start the car, you tend to be rich. If you've got a carbureted car, the choke is on. If you've got a fuel-injected car, you've got you know, a richer mixture programmed in to get it started and get it initially fired off. And then for emissions purposes, you want to try to lean it out uh, as quickly as you can so that you're not sending extra fuel down the tailpipe. But at this point your oxygen sensor is cold and it won't read anything when it's cold. Um, newer cars have you know heated oxygen sensors that will pick up pretty darn fast but these older cars are, are not heated sensors and, and uh, so they don't work right out of the box. Catalyst, same thing, the catalyst when it's cold doesn't do anything. It has to get up to I don't remember the exact numbers, but you know, probably three, four hundred degrees before it'll light off and start uh, doing its job. So my little red X's here are the places where air isn't flowing during warm-up. You'll see the flow goes into the exhaust manifold, and then you put you you have extra fuel. You don't have enough air, so this pump puts extra air in, and and helps burn the excess fuel in the exhaust manifold, which gets the exhaust manifold hot pretty fast, gets the oxygen sensor warmed up pretty fast, and even goes down the pipe and helps get the catalytic converter warmed up. So once you get it warmed up and the, and the oxygen sensor comes in and you get to what they call closed loop, you're trying to hold that 14.7 or oscillate on 14.7 to 1. They shut off the air to the exhaust manifold. Because if you keep feeding air into the exhaust manifold, the oxygen sensor will think you're still running lean and it'll add fuel in to try to come to a, to, a you know, it, it'll rich in the mixture. And so you could end up with an engine that's running too rich. At this point, you're not sending any air overboard, so there's a big red X there. In the catalytic converter itself, it's starting to convert in the three-way portion 
And in order for that three-way portion to work, just like I showed you in the, in the picture a minute ago, you need to be right around 14.7. And again, if you, had, if you were adding air into the exhaust manifold, you would be off and it would be hard for it to get 14.7, so you want that shut off. And at that point, where you're in closed loop, now it switches over and it's sending air in between the two converter bricks. So the three-way brick is doing its thing and it's converting and it's dropping hydrocarbons, CO, NOx, but you still probably have more hydrocarbons and carbon monoxide than you'd like. It doesn't clean it all up. So they add air in so that you can uh, make it leaner uh, for the purposes of the catalyst, so the hydrocarbon and carbon monoxide. So if we go back to that chart for a minute, what you'll see is when you're lean, and in this case the lean isn't because the engine is running lean, it's because you're sending extra air down the, into the converter by a separate pipe. Now you can see is that the conversion efficiency on the lean side for carbon monoxide and hydrocarbon is really good. So what you want to make sure is that when you're in closed loop, and, and I'm going to go back to trouble trees and things in a minute, but just thinking terms, right? You really want to make sure is that when you're warming up, you have air going to the exhaust manifolds. When it goes to closed loop, that needs to stop completely, shut her off. And you should be sending air to the catalytic converter down its hose. Now, if the system has a problem, if you're too rich, if, you're, um, if you have an overheated, uh, you know, there are various failure me mechanisms in, the, in this system where they don't want to send air down to the catalyst anymore. And I think this is even when it's working normally, I think if you back off and go to close throttle and coast, um, in, you know, in gear, uh, they'll divert the air overboard to atmosphere through the, through the diverter valve. Um, Valve. Now, again, I'm going to go back here and we'll, we'll walk through the hoses and, and so forth, but that's the fundamental where you want. My subscriber said that in his case that if he took off the belt, he would have low NOx emissions, but his hydrocarbons and carbon monoxide would be uh, kind of off the scale. And that would suggest perhaps that the uh, that the pump isn't closing off completely, that the, the valve feeding the exhaust manifold isn't closing off completely. Because now he's saying, I took off the belt, right? So I take off the belt, I stop, I know I stopped sending air into the exhaust manifold. So now Knox is happy because I'm running on 14.7. Then down at the catalytic converter, the second half isn't working anymore. Uh, isn't working at peak efficiency because it doesn't have enough air to do its job because it's now it's being starved of oxygen I'll call it and so my suspicion would be that in his particular case he may have a, a, a valve leaking uh, for some reason he's got uh, may have air going into the exhaust manifold when it shouldn't now one would think if you had enough air going into the exhaust manifold, at some point you would set a DTC, a diagnostic code, uh, for being um, you know, too lean because I'm pumping too much air down and the system can't ever get to closed loop. But I don't know what happens if you get one of these uh, poppet valves off the air pump that maybe is uh, deteriorating with age and it doesn't seal tight anymore and you're still sending some air down that you really weren't... Um, weren't expecting to. And if you did that and it was running off um, you know where the system can't uh, can't compensate, um, you'd throw your NOx emissions off. You know the idea that that taking the pump off, taking the supplemental air off the car brings your NOx into line is a maybe a clue. Uh, that's just an example of where this has you know practical significance. So, I'm going to go here, uh, switch over here now and walk uh, the hardware under the hood and we'll, uh, we'll take a look at that in the service manual. Here we are with the shop manual and here's um, GM's little picture of 
how that's mechanized with the different uh, components in their system. And they have their um, general description here. Air system reducing hydrocarbon carbon dioxide, nitrous oxides, and helps heat up the catalytic converter quickly on startup. And so here they're describing a three-way catalyst in series with a two-way catalyst, as I just described to you, and additional pieces. This one is the uh, is a picture of that valve and how it's mechanized, and you have two solenoids in there, and you have. Um, poppet valve that uh, controls flow. And I'm just going to walk down there. Most of this is I already explained to you, but so if no air enters the exhaust stream at the exhaust ports or the converter pipe, Hydrocarbon and carbon monoxide will be too high. All right, page two. There are a number of things on here. This is just the general description of how you'd replace it. Uh, one thing they do want you to do if you start working on this system is to make sure the check valves are good. There are check valves on the exhaust manifold. See, there's one right, right there is a check valve. And there's a check valve on the other side that goes back to the catalyst. Actually, there are three check valves. One goes to eat. Actually, that top one is for the other exhaust manifold, and there's one in the back that goes down to the catalytic converter. So this is the this is the diagnostic section and you can see the I'm just going to give you their look at how the air pump system is mechanized. It's driven by the ECM. Here's the description of functional check um, over here on the on the facing page. So they want you to come in, start the engine, running part throttle below 2,000 RPM. You should get air to the exhaust ports during open loop, which is which is pretty fast. They're warning you it could be as short as six seconds if you had a warm engine. And then it should switch to just going to the converter when you uh, go into closed loop mode. So they have a test here where you disconnect the TPS and it should divert to atmosphere for just a few seconds. Um, I'm not going to reread all these off. I'm just going to kind of walk down here and you can see, you know, because the diagnostics will be, you know, did the ECM command them? Here's one. So the first one is if it's okay, um, if you're getting okay meaning you're getting air to the exhaust ports uh, on a start, they want to make sure that it diverts. And then here's port, then divert only. And here's one that says constant port or converter air. And this is another one where you could bring in a 12 volt test light. Again, I'm just going to walk down here. Um, one of the things that they'll tell you is you know, they want you to check for airflow, and in this one it says 
Air to the ports may be very short and you can test it by squeezing a hose. Now on my engine these hoses are pretty doggone stiff. I don't know how you would squeeze a hose to, um, to verify. Now each model year is a little different. I know that some of the other model years moved the air pump to a different spot. On my 85 it's down here and the control valves are here and there are two solenoid uh, connections. Let's see if I can get underneath there. Another solenoid connection underneath. So this would be the hose to atmosphere. It's really hard. You got to watch these. So this hose goes to the catalytic converter. And you can see it feed down here and goes into the tube and heads da heads down to the back. This hose goes down into this metal tube and has a branch in it. And one of them comes back up here to this exhaust manifold and the other set tube goes around the back and goes to the exhaust manifold over there. And so these are the check valves and you can remove these plastic clips and remove the hose. And, and I would if it were me, I would disconnect this and I would check for airflow by taking a hose off and verifying that I had flow. And you may be able to do that by removing the hoses right here at the valve or you know, whatever is convenient. Um, just advise that you be careful pulling things off the valve because um, it's plastic and you don't want to break any of the fittings. That's how the system is supposed to work, and if it does, your catalytic converter should operate properly. Now, on the new cars, these days with OBD2, they put an oxygen sensor on the downstream end of the catalyst, and they can measure catalyst efficiency and tell you that your catalytic converter is uh, no longer working properly. On these cars, you really can't tell unless you do emissions tests and so forth and so this is the best this is the next thing is making sure that you have the right air in the right place at the right time well I hope that was helpful to you and when you get into diagnosing catalytic converters and air pumps and so forth if you're having emissions issues this is what it's all about till next time